world wandered after the beast, and they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? It's the death time storyteller selling to my fiends. Caught a piece of felonies, lose Caesar disease. Got the focus of a track to be my locust woman back of me. A mafioso soldier hit a whack you straight from Napoli. Or bring your cabinet crapping it. Satanic when I'm active, I'll be practicing my sacrificial skills. I stay stabbing it. The Magnum 44 collapse you on the floor, faggot. Shattering the fabric of the jacket that you wore. I'm the rap rabbit dog, I'll tap your jaw and snap it all. Cut through bullshit like a matador with a Spanish sword. Got to clap the be applause, pussies leave, they break north. They shook like Michael Gay Fox, just some Casualties of war So my pen game is impeccable A savage on soul Run shit like a hungry cheetah And my stamina's strong the Super villain Lex Luthor Fuck your mother like your father Darth Vader with a dark saber Goes right the heart of the war beast Take the war Kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it concoction War beast Take the war Yesterday wake, wake, wake Grenade shopping War beast Take the war Ready for war War beast Take war Beast field general, my enemies are edible My pen and flow is deadlier than chemicals and fentanyl Bet you all the cheddar that you got up in your pockets That I'm not the one to box with Crack you open like a lock, pick your poison Pistol blade over pistol ricochet Six million choices for you and I'm here to list the ways Misbehaving with the razor, drain your blood like taxidermist Your skull next to my toilet helps to keep my bathroom furnished I'm the purchaser of sinner souls, unfortunate and pitiful Serve organs in a bowl of guts and soak it up with dinner rolls Ripping up you bitches quicker than a wood chipper Clip you like a mob hitter with a pair of good Scissors. It doesn't make a difference if you try to fight your finish Shove a spike into the innocent, I like to be Maleficent The tight to tie a rope around your throat and tighten slow I stay recycling the evil like the bite from lycanthropes War beast Take the war Kill the concoction War beast It's Mr. Hide, you fucking whores. Best be locking up your doors. Yeah, that was War Beast. And of course, obviously, by hearing the song, you know, Mr. Hyde is here. This is the Nothing Sacred interview. I'm Maxwell Silverhammer. And you right. are Mr. Hyde. <laughs> all day. All day. Yes. <laughs> fucking, and, um, so uh, is my video on or, or what no, are we doing here? Do no, no, no. It's, ugly mug here? Are, no, are we can't doing? see you. We're just going to stick the graphic in later of, um, you know how we okay. do it, man. With, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you could do like a collage of, of graphics and you know so like that right kind of yeah kind of like the stuff he was doing last time when we had you on with uh cherry rain and you guys were doing the bonnie and clyde thing a uh, bonnie and hyde oh, sorry okay. yeah the bonnie and hyde yeah so yeah so i don't have to mess with these backgrounds i got these i'm addicted to these zoom meetings every interview i do i do these uh little these backgrounds uh I throw up a new thing like a logo or you know oh. a, gnarly, a crazy looking picture or Huh. You know, just, just like, 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 kind of like when you do a live show and you put a banner up. So I don't right. know if it's gonna be a, a visual one for Zoom <clears throat> for your, uh, for your listeners. Ah. Okay. Cool. All right. I even wore, like, I even wore a, a cool limited edition Texas Chainsaw Massacre shirt, but now, oh. now, I, can, <laughs> now, now I can take it off and move my tits out. Hey, case. you know us visually impaired motherfuckers. We don't care about all that stuff, man. Well, yeah, I know not. Yeah, I don't care about you. I care about your listeners and your viewers. <laughs> <laughs> See, we're selfish, I guess. We're like, oh, well, you know, I've, I've talked to Cruise Control about doing video and all that. And he's like, nah, man, you know, we're visually impaired and just make it non-visual. Yeah. So, you know. Right, we- right, right. Nah, yeah, that's that's cool. Though. It's, it's like an old school radio interview. That's that's still, still dope. That's the way, yeah. you, you know, that's the way it should be. 
Absolutely. Listen to my voice and get hypnotized. Exactly. Exactly. That's what we're going to do. We're going to hypnotize. Speaking of hypnotized and your voice. So here it is, man. Another album, Tortures of the Damned, man. This just dropped, huh? It is, yeah, it just dropped on uh, Halloween. Halloween drop, special for the nice. kitties. Nice. <laughs> Tricks and treats for the kitties. It's better, but, it's better than candy. It's better than candy <laughs> with razor blades in them. <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, you know, it's it's wild, man, how you just keep churning out albums that are dope. You know, most of the time artists will, you know, they start to lose their ability after a while or their their allure, as it were. And they say, well, it's because they're not hungry anymore. But man, you just you and Necro just do consistent dope shit. How how is that, man? Yeah, I mean, I think it's just because we're still we're still hungry and uh we still got stuff to prove to ourselves and and uh we're very competitive, you know. Yeah. Even with even even with even with each other, it's like, hey, my album's better than yours. <laughs> no, I'm just, <laughs> you're just no, just in general, I, I'm an artist to the core, um, and I always fans always ask me about that too. Like, how do you stay consistent? How do you? I say because I don't really have any um, outside competition. My competition is is myself. I, I, I in the, the prerequisite when I when I create a new project is to outdo my last one. Whether that gets accomplished or not, you know, it's not always an easy task. And right. whether it gets accomplished or not, that, you know, remains to be seen and leave it up to the fans to determine. But at least I gave it the, you know, I, I gave it a go. Yeah, yeah, and, give and it that's, a shot. That's, that's one of the things in the back of my mind that um, I have a whole bunch of things, like like a whole prerequisite list of when I'm creating a song and an album. And, you know, I try to meet those, those standards in that checklist. Well, I like how you guys, because uh, you don't hear – rappers putting scratches in their shit anymore man and you got uh, scratches all over this thing and i love it right right well one of the things you know i don't like to get put in a box of like horror core or you know shit like that and 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 as as much as horror is an influence of mine you know old school 80s 70s and 80s horror and um and just violence in general but <laughs> uh you know i'm also heavily influenced by golden era hip-hop so i try to make sure that my contribution to hip hop is in, 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 you know, seen and evident in my project. So I will always have that classic golden era sounding boom back type track, whether, whatever album, if you go along the albums, you'll hear them. So like, you know, killer collage is in there with DJ clips doing cuts. And that's like a very boom bap sounding with the DJ cuts. And then, you know, rhyme to murder was one on evil never dies with uh, DJ evil D did the cuts. And I also try to implicate different, Producers and different DJs on all my on all my albums just to keep shit fresh, you know. That's that's another thing I noticed. Nothing sounds the same. Like none of your beats, yeah. you know. Sometimes you could tell, like a producer, like ah, oh, okay, that sounds that, like their production. But in this case, it's right. like all different. Right. Well, you know, as it could be, you know, it, it can be seen as in two ways, like a pro and a con. Because in one way, a producer could have like a vintage classic, um, you know, signature sound. Where like a DJ premiere, you kind of know it's a premiere beat for some reason. When I hear it, you know he's got the cuts in there, and he's got a lot of the time, and 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 you could kind of hear like, the way he chops drums, and you know it's a premiere beat. And then then it could be a bad thing where a lot of the beats just sound the same, and you know like you got to you got to you got to switch it up. So yeah. I mean, I, I like to. It, it's it's misconstrued by some of the producers that want to work with me. They'll send me something to be like, oh, I got something that you know, it was perfect for you and perfect for your style. And then I'll hear it and it'll be like something, it sounds like something I've, I've rapped on before. And I, I, I don't, you know, not necessarily want to do that. Right. So, well, at least you know, the person you know. did their homework and listened to your music and kind of figured out what yeah. you sound like, you know? Well, yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. But, but, you know, like for me, it's like, yeah, I will pick a, a, you know, a track that, you know, maybe sounds real evil, but it has to have that element of originality that, that maybe stands out to me that uh, as something that I haven't, spit on before you know so yeah. there's something in there man. man well you know here's another thing i've noticed like necro's been doing mainly singles right now where you've actually done albums so what makes well, you do the yeah album? you know you know because necro's probably smarter than me because <laughs> <laughs> singles do better digitally so if you just even if you just look at the numbers in general, like which for some reason the short attention span of of the youth today and the listener today, uh, along with playlisting for like digital, uh, that'll you know that goes to the advantage of singles because you drop a new single and it's 
easy for the listener to just, oh, a new new single. Let me play it uh, and let me throw it on my playlist, right? New single, mm-hmm. boom, boom. It's, it's two clicks. One click to play it, one click to add to a playlist. Whereas an album, sometimes a, a listener has to get mentally prepared for it where to be like, oh, a new Mr. Hyde album, um, I'm going to have to get my headphones and listen to this and, you know, when I'm when I got nothing else going on and I know I got to like immerse myself into the album and, and prepare myself, you know, that, that type of thing. It's heavy. And right. you, you almost have to set a date to listen to a Hyde album, right? Where you can't <laughs> just you know, chuck it on and play it. You know, also, you know, like if say you're just driving to the grocery store, you're more apt to play a playlist or you're more apt to pl- just throw on the new song than, than listen to the whole album. You probably won't make it through. And then that kind of translates to movies and series on TV, right? So series right, yeah. do a lot better. Netflix series and Hulu series, whatever, do a lot better than movies nowadays. It's because of the shortest attention span and because of like, um, if you got to invest three hours or two and a half hours to a movie. So what are you going to do? You'll watch a, a 30 a thirty minute Netflix series episode over a movie most of the time. Most of the people busy, you know, especially with my age group listener, 35 and up, you, you know, is the, is the majority, is it like 75% of my listeners are 35 and up. You know, uh, so so that they they have a lot of responsibilities and busy. Yeah, they got kids, so it's like put the kids to sleep. You want to watch a, a two and a half hour movie, or do you want to watch a, a series episode that's thirty minutes? You know, so yeah. I, I think that that's part of it. And then the other thing is just you know, with a single, you 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 can um, it goes on release radar. Uh, it could be promoted. It could be just added to a bunch of different playlists where you're not going to sit there and add every song of an album to a playlist. Maybe you know. Feel like that. Right. So I think singles just overall do better. And when I look at the numbers, um, it reflects that, you know, because the, the you know, with the single um make a mess was a single, a digital single, and um Livewire was a, a digital single off this album. I usually try to do two or three singles off an album. Um and, and their their numbers are I mean, given they came out before the album did and they had a, they had their run, but uh the album hasn't had its full run yet. But the the, the numbers are significantly higher. As Actually, far as streams. we're going to play Make a Mess a little later, um, or we could play it after, you know, after this little segment, if you want to, whatever. Man. Right, a little segue to Make a Mess. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a, <laughs> it's a nice way to, so, but but why do you continue to do albums? What's what's your personal reason for like, I'm going to do a full album, fuck a single. I, I'm stuck in that era. I'm stuck in the 90s. I'm stuck in, you know, like that, that golden era of hip hop and the standard of albums. And I know what you're going to, you, you'll probably follow up with, well, then why don't you do three verses of the song anymore? <laughs> <laughs> but then again, you know, I'll come right back with the, I know that's always a, you know, a, a gripe of yours. But right. give, give us another verse. But, you know, I think it's because the, the, also part of the thing, the, the attention span, nobody's making five minute songs anymore. It's mm-hmm. like, you know, two and a half to three minute songs are like the, the um, that's the standard, the gold standard for like the top streaming singles. And, you know, uh, I'm trying to at least get myself in in that mode. But, yeah, I just feel like, you know, a lot of people drop singles with 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 no album. You know, it doesn't it never goes to an album. It just it's just a single drop. And I always felt like back in the day when you'd hear a song, you'd be like, oh, yeah, you know, what album is that on? Right. Wouldn't that right, be like yeah. the first answer? You know, w- you know, where can I get the album that that single is on? And it's like, what album is it on? So So nowadays. I'm like, I don't want to have any homeless singles. I call them homeless singles. <laughs> so you got a single that's just homeless. It's just floating around there as a single and nothing else. I got to right. put it on an album, you know? And then even all the features I've done over the years, I'm going to eventually grab them all and put them on like a compilation album. You know, like uh, they shouldn't just be floating around on, you know, whatever as, right. as homeless singles or homeless features. So eventually <laughs> I'll do that. That's, uh, well, I personally, if, if I want to hear, like, say, I want to hear Hyde, man, I want to hear a whole album. I don't just want to hear, oh, I just want to hear that one song by by him. You know, I, I want to hear the whole, yeah. like, I'm in Hyde mood, so I want to hear out music by you. You know what I mean? That's part of the the part of the Halloween drop, too. It's, it's Mr. Hyde season. It's Mr. Hyde theme. Get you in the field, pull you into my world. You know, the boogeyman is real. Every time I put out an album, there's kind of a theme and there's kind of a, a world and feel that you get around it. Um, you know, Bonnie and Hyde has its own theme. Um, you know, the boogeyman is real. Evil never dies. This this one, you know, Barn of the Naked Dead. All, all of all of these albums had their theme, and 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 you, you kind of get a a nostalgic feeling, and 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 you get in the mood w- with with those records. And uh, I, that, that's why that's why I prefer albums too. It's another reason. Yeah, yeah. Well, either way, it's 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 dope. Keep doing albums, man. <laughs> like yeah, you said. Yeah. 
I don't really care for homeless singles or, or you'll see like, oh, they just dropped a new single. And you're like, oh, what about an album? I, I want to hear more of this shit. You know, yeah, yeah. and it's kind of cool. Be- my singles do well because it kind of lets the fans know an album is coming. You know, so when I have it, when you hear, uh, um, Adam, if I don't do anything in six months or seven months, then then you the new Mr. Hyde single, you know that that's going to get followed up soon with an album because I'm not going to leave it homeless. So you know, nice, you know, nice. It's, uh, it's one of those things, but I'm I'm glad you're enjoying it. I mean, I don't know um, what you, what what's uh, you know on the first listen you, you might have a favorite song, and then after a bunch of listens you might have a new favorite song, and that, that's. Um, a lot of a lot of times my fans tell me that like when I first heard it at first listen this was my favorite and now that I've been like digesting the album this is my favorite and I, I feel like that's a that's a common thing with my albums for some reason well we just played one of my favorites which was War Beast I mean right away that just grabbed me I was like oh shit <laughs> you know yeah, it, just, gets, it was dope that gets you pumped to kick the kids off the lawn right oh off hell yeah take yeah, those right. kids right off the fucking steps you'd be shooting <laughs> them off the steps is what you'd be doing yeah. Four yeah, beast. yeah, and, that, and 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 in turn, that would make a mess. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but yeah. although I do like the line, what did you say? Uh, Stuff like a taxidermist. Keep, keep your skull by my toilet to keep my bathroom furnished. Yeah, 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 yeah. Drain your blood like taxidermist. Your skull That's next what... to my toilet it helps to keep my bathroom furnished. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I, listen, that's one of the things also that. Um, Fans will always say this. You know, you say things that nobody else said or would say, and right. they, they can I'll only kind of get my content from me. So I, uh, you know, I take pride in that. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And noted. Well, you gotta. I mean, anything in death rap or horrorcore. You know, I always say this. You gotta outdo the next person. If the one guy says that, you know, he fucks corpses, you gotta say I burn and fuck corpses or something. You know, it's all right, right, about right. doing. You can't just, yeah. you know. That's kind of my. Yeah, gripe. you got to you got to light your dick on fire first before you fuck it. Right? That, that, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, you know, yeah. <laughs> that's the thing. You know, like a lot of my problem with a lot of horrorcore can be just it's kind of eh, you know. Like, yeah, it's, che- it's cheesy. Shit. I always say that's cheesy. It's like I'll fuck your mother, or I'll kill your brother. And, uh, <laughs> they, they don't. Really, it's not really imaginative, and it's just you know, kill, 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 and whatever. And the beats are usually cheap too. Like they they're, they're kind of cheesy fucking Tinker Toy piano beats and. You know, I, <laughs> I don't know if you could he- if you hear the production value and the and the, um and the audio quality in this new record and and just Fuck yeah. I, I feel like that's another thing that keeps improving is uh is the um, sonic sonically you, you know and the and the production value and that, that's attributed largely to my engineer multiple blast off Albert Charlemagne he's he's a real dope produ- um producer also. Uh, he helps executive produce the records and and he's he's really he's got a real ear for. Uh, uh, creative, creatively melding with my style, you know. Has, has he done all your projects, or is he kind of a new guy you just brought in? He's done everything since. If it bleeds, we can kill it. So I've oh. been recording, mixing, and mastering with him since uh, 2012. Nice. And um, yeah, so like like the last five albums. Wow. So yeah, he got an 11 year run with this guy, and obviously his yeah. track record is showing. You know. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Man, wow. <laughs> well, you know what? Let's jump into Make a Mess since we talked about it so much. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna we're gonna jump into that and then we're gonna come back and talk to you some more. Sounds good. Yeah. It's an unusually menacing figure with a reputation for being hot tempered and sadistic. Was just one shot to the head? I didn't shoot him. I was in somebody's house. You make a mess. I shot him a couple of times. The kid died. Well, what's a couple? Ten times, twelve times. Maybe fifteen, even. It could have been fifteen. Why? That's the yeah. hatred I had for him. I wanted to beat him with the gun after it was empty. That's the law, anyway. Yeah. Yo. You check my methods, epic, epileptic, hectic, and hysteric Shoot you like a racist sheriff, true your face up like a ferret Yo, I always chose to roll with those who be the most ferocious Why you boast you hard, but when approach you mostly soft like hostess Cupcakes, you punk face, my straight rays are scrapes And cuts great, you slut duct tape shuts up your face I'm killing people off with ethanol, nasty like a fever sore Disturb the sleeping dog, I'm waking up to eat you all And you'll accept a sick infectious indentation of your skin Or a left up to your chin, the situation's win-win Now position's getting wasted, always anxious to erase I can't hesitate or wait cause mental patients aren't patient Cut your ventilation off, I'll bet you cough up half a lung Aim for 
you son of Satan, y'all know where the fuck I'm from It's the flip side of heaven where the serpent skin is shedding Where I'll grip you by the neck and then commence to kick your head in I'll let the animal at you clapping nines in traffic Gats with rapid fire hatches, hack your caps I'm wearing rapid scalp for hair And there ain't nothing to save you, pray to any savior that you choose to I'll shoot the deuce, deuce and spray your blood out like it's food juice The future suture's loosen to induce some lucid visions The hallucinogens in your system got you stupid Listen, it's the type of shit that makes you wanna grip a knife And stick it in a light socket Shocking like a Michael Tyson hit Shit, I'm licensing the sickness that I kick, it's copywritten Got these bodies rotting in my kitchen, dripping botulism There's a macho man, Randy Savage, double axe handle hat I'ma ring the back of heads and next get left dead like his manager The panoramic panic giving not so good Samaritan Got allergies to whack rappers and my guess the clarity I'm arrogant and violent carrying a stick of dynamite With the big lighter lit I think I might ignite it with it Can you hear me good? Yes, sir. We are back with the Nothing Sacred interview with Mr. Hyde. That was Make a Mess. What, what uh, is that Joe Pesci on that clip? It, it, it's not. No, it's not. I, um, I, I like to let my fans dig for if they're going to find my samples. Ah. Uh, cause usually I, um, I usually kind of, some of them are, are kind of evident or classic, like, you know, even cuts and stuff like on, on war beast, you know, that I, I use big pun and cool G rap. And, and like, and, yeah. Cool G rap is on there. There's different ones that you, you might know right off the bat. And then there might be a couple of more obscure ones. And it's the same thing with my samples. Cause so you'll hear like a kind of commercial one with like a Pulp Fiction or, you know, something like that. And then, then there'll be ones that you'll never figure out where they're from. So I, I, that's kind of one of the things I like to do. It's one of my trademarks. So I'm not going to give up where that sample came from. All I will ah. say is that all I will say is that it's not a movie. It's a, it's a, it's an interview. So oh. it's an interview. It's an interview with a real killer. Oh wow! I actually yeah. thought it came from because the guy kind of sounds like a Joe Pesci. I was like, well, where did that come from? I don't, you know, I'm pretty up yeah. on Joe Pesci. So you right, know. right. That's it. No, it's a real. It's a real interview with a real murderer. Oh so, wow. Yeah. Yeah, Man. so you'd have to find who it is and where it's from, and one of those things. Like you know, like uh, uh like the Ice Man. Like the, he had a he had a classic. I remember the Ice Man. Yep. Right, right. He had a classic one, so it's something similar to that. Actually, there's a one YouTube over. channel called Uwu Body Cam or uh, Uwu Stories or something like that, and uh, they have interrogations that are pretty fucked up, man. There's some pretty twisted Mr. Hyde type shit on there, man. So yeah, yeah check them out i mean i thought the, I, I, it was just so great it was like oh uh, yeah I, sh I shot him a couple times he's like a couple times uh you know 10 times 12 times he, eh, it could have been 15 <laughs> the guy's like, <laughs> right. matter of factly did you, uh, you, you shoot him in the head nah that you i was in somebody's house it would make a mess you crazy <laughs> <You know? laughs> and it said the hatred i had for him that's why you know. yeah, yeah 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 why would you shoot him so many times yeah, the hatred i had for him i wanted to beat him with the gun <laughs> 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 yeah, man. <laughs> That's funny. You know, um, I was reading, I don't know if you've read this book, uh, Diary of a Madman. Uh, it's Scarface's book. And he's talking about, he, he mentions homeboy business, you know, where him and Jay, little Jay were friends and kind of buddies and they trusted each other and, or, well, he trusted Jay and Jay kind of fucked him. So how do you and Necro, obviously you guys have a homeboy, have homeboy business, but you guys don't screw each other over, man. I mean, that's a pretty rare occurrence. In music. Yeah, right, right. No, it is definitely. They, they say you're not supposed to like mix uh, business with family or business with friendship, and usually turns out fucked up. But uh, yeah, I mean, we're just uh, we're some of the few, especially in the hip hop game. Uh, some of the uh, a few stand up guys. We're just you know we're, yeah. uh, we 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 stick to our word, 
we try to you know follow through on everything we say we're gonna do and um and I, I, we're on some brothership where we do have each other's back and we're loyal and we've been you know we're, we're not just in the friendship to get things out of each other we, if someone legitimately needs help or you know we're there for each other so you know whatever it is so That's good. you know we're, we're there for each other's family you know what i mean like his his mom gets sick i'm i'm coming over you know like right. something, something like that uh back and forth you know if um, my my wife needs something or my daughter needs something i know i can call him so it's, just, it's, a, it's a it's a it's a rare thing for sure oh yeah but we, yeah yeah we're we're 20 something years uh, since 1997 so it's, it's, get, it's getting close to 30 years yeah that's uh wow <laughs> yeah you don't see that because usually in hip-hop it's you know especially in hip-hop you know they fuck each other over and you you, you know a, a lot of stories i read uh run uh dmc's book too same thing run was an asshole <laughs> you know right. so you yeah. know well like, and, and you see a lot of really a lot in metal like guns and roses axel rose and slash can never get along and you know just uh um, Van Halen broke up however many times. David Lee Roth was an asshole, and blah blah blah. <laughs> Megadeth, you know, fucking Dave Mustaine is the biggest asshole supposedly. Right, but, right. You know, wow. You know, but but super, but super talented. I think, man, because you guys are still, because you're not on any, you don't have any distribution deals or any weird shit. You know, you're working with just you guys, right? With psychological. Well, well, yeah. I mean, now nowadays it, it's uh with with digital you could just put out your own record so i'm i'm psychological but i i, I distribute my own music through TuneCore, just because it's easier you know i don't have to there's no uh, accounting that has to be done and i own all my own masters so everything all the money just comes straight to me so mm -hmm. when we were doing uh a distro deal through like chronicles of the beast man and barn of the naked dead we it was through psychological but we had to get distro deals oh right so, there's tvs uh, and shit outside yeah outside physical distro deals but for digital you know it's, it's it's why do accounting if he puts out my record then we then he has to hire an accountant to break down the the streams right so right. we're not we're not we're not gonna do it like that that's cool Plus, so you just put get... the name it's just the name really for you you know I'm yeah a yeah i mean it's, it's it's almost like a crew and family at this point because we unless he's doing like um a vinyl deal like i've done that since digital's out where, where he's on a vinyl and he got the, the vinyl deal and put put out my record. So, man, ha. But yeah, well, yeah, it's good, man. That's uh, it's the way it should be. You know, I think that too many times too, they're involving too many middlemen, and everyone's got their hands and shit. It's just like, man, this is doing dumb shit. I don't know, man. Is there any kind of like advice you want you could lay somebody on as far as music business wise? Yeah, don't get in the music business. <laughs> don't get into it at all <laughs> yeah no, no, do it in your house as a hobby you know what i mean make you know make well, songs add, the, add some add some farts to your songs and <laughs> and have fun with it you know what i mean but don't yeah don't don't, don't do the music you know I, I i would still say to like if you're gonna if the the, the quickest way to success is to get discovered by someone and get signed because right. the, the, the 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 amount of work it takes to, to be an independent artist and then and be self-sufficient off it and, and and be and be and have longevity with it is is too much man it, it's it's too crazy i'm i do it because i'm just going through the motions now and i have i have that core fan base um and that that cult following that supports everything i do but um if if you, you know if you're going to get started in it you have to know that it's a 24 hour a day job you know create not just creating you gotta be an entity on social media uh you have to have that presence there and you know, nonstop on fucking whatever Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, TikTok, all these fucking uh, platforms demand so much of your time, and it's like it's it's really like it's like a young kid's thing now. That's why you see so many of these artists that are, that if there's any that are independent, the ones that do well are 19, 20 years old because they got no other responsibilities but to be on their fucking phone all day. Uh, yeah, so they're, yeah. They're, they're doing lives, they're doing TikTok fucking dances, and they're out in the street talking to people and, and promoting themselves. And those are the ones that are going to have the, you know, the most, but do they have longevity? Maybe not. I don't think the so. longevity wherein is the music, it, 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 you know, the music itself has to be good for, right, for you right. to even have longevity because, you know, you could do all that stuff and your music sucks. So. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's the thing. Here's your guys' fan base. You know, <laughs> we've followed you since, you know, the late nineties or whatever. 
And, right. uh, you know, here it is. We're, we're still jamming your shit. We're still buying where you're right. Prisages could make an album and next year, you know, nobody knows who the fuck that is anymore. You know? Right. And that's how that it's like fast food. It's almost like, you know, like you don't, you don't, it doesn't hold its value. You know, you, you eat it and you shit it right out. And then the next, and then the next thing happens, you know, like it, you're hungry 20 minutes later. <laughs> I heard an interview with Ed Lover and he called it microwave music. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. 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 Microwavable food. Yeah. <laughs> TV dinner. <laughs> yeah. As opposed to like a nice steak dinner with Peter Luger's or something, you know? Right. Right. I, I, I'd say like that. Cause you know, the, my, the, the, the replay value is like the aftertaste of a great meal. You know, you, you, you have that where you think about it and you, you want to go back. Right. You know, you're not thinking that you want to go back to the fucking, the Chinese takeout that made you sick. <laughs> you know, it made you like, it made you hungry twenty minutes later. Or, you know, had you feeling crazy because of all the MSG. Actually, Chinese takeouts way better than say like McDonald's or Carl's Jr. Though, <laughs> you know. Oh uh, yeah, I, bro. That's those those fucking places aren't even in my vocabulary anymore. You know, like the the worst I'll do is like Denny's or something. Denny's, oh, man. Shout out, <laughs> shout out to Denny's because me, when me and Necro were on tour in the U.S. After every show, we were going to Denny's. <laughs> you know what? I remember a story you told. I think it was last interview where Kid Joe would go and he'd order this big ass shake at Denny's or yep. something. <laughs> yeah, every show after every. First of all, he he came on the tour. He was, when we first started the tour, it was like a it's like a thirty five show tour, right? Uh -huh. And before the tour started, he was like one hundred and sixty five pounds, right? You know, little, little little guy, Joe Pesci looking Kid Joe, right? And, and after every show, he or he went. We went to Denny's, ate late at night. You know, you're not really supposed to eat late at night either. That's another thing. Oh, and yeah. we're eating. He's ordering the same thing every night. Every night, the same thing: steak and eggs, right? So you know right. the fucking cholesterol is through the roof, and a big fucking fat milkshake. You know, like a, a big chocolate milkshake, like the, you know those huge ones that come in the in the tin, the steel tin oh. can thing. When I used to so be a fat fucker, I used to eat those all the time. <laughs> Right, so you pour Same it in thing. a glass, and then there's still another fucking eight ounces inside the tin fucking thing. So, right. so he, he he's drinking like basically two two of those, and uh, with with the steak and eggs every night. When we finished the tour, he was over two hundred pounds. So this this kid gained like fifty pounds on a thirty five date or thirty five show tour, and um, yeah, like it's just like he was having heart trouble and all sorts of shit after. I mean, it was crazy. He just Did he looked he, he just <laughs> he swole up. Did, didn't you tell me he was he's dead now? Was that? Yeah, Kid Joe passed away during COVID. Yeah, during the oh. COVID. Uh, he he had heart trouble, and then uh, he was also diabetic, and I think he might have ate bad at like a Fourth of July thing, you know, and 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 being sub subjected to COVID on top of that in the hospital. But, you know, they said that it was a it was a heart attack type thing. Uh, maybe you know, diabetic. He was eating wrong, and maybe he was in diabetic shock. Part of it, and right. then in the hospital while they were caring for him, I guess he, he might have caught COVID as well. And Jesus, it was too much. yeah, it was too much. Damn, that sucks because we all missed the kid Joe antics and the crazy shit that he would say and do, and you know. So yeah, I still post stuff here and there, like on some Throwback Thursday shit, and I'll, I'll put up a kid Joe video, and it still gets the same laughs and responses and engagement as the, you know. So cause yeah. he's definitely legendary when it comes to that that, that, that stuff. Like you said, the antics. Yeah. Kid yeah. Joe was a fucking original character. He sure was, man. It's like we almost would get a psychological album just so we can hear some what crazy shit Kid Joe's going to do next. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we would bring him on tour just for mainly just for laughs and, and to like harass people. We would sick basically sicking Kid Joe on people for <laughs> our enjoyment. You know, like to see what he's gonna say to them and see the people's reactions. We would, right. bro, we would, we were doing shows in the Bible Belt, and oh, we had them. You know, like the born, the born again Christians would come over and try to preach Jesus to. to and I'm like, Kid Joe is interested. Talk to him. You know, <laughs> and we're gonna see how that that conversation, that back and forth goes. Did, did you ever video any of that? I'd love to see those. Yeah, yeah, they're on YouTube. Oh, um, look up. You know, Kid Joe on tour with Necro or the Kid Joe. Kid Joe with uh with Bible thumpers. Oh yeah, <laughs> it'll, that... it, it, it'll come up. <laughs> I, I know Necro did a few clowning videos too. Like there was one where he was going, he was going up to random people, going, "Hey, will you pick my nose for me? I I, I need you to pick my nose for me." 
<laughs> yeah, that's Necro's uh, Necro Outside series. That's called. Yeah, so it's like Necro bothering people outside. We, yeah, we, because we're notorious for that. When we tour, we harass everybody. You know, just for our own <laughs> shits and giggles. We were we in the street, you know, and with Kid Joe, it was even it was it was up a notch when we had Joe with us. Oh yeah, you know, we, sure. we would have Kid Joe run up on girls and sing, you know, kiss songs and you know <laughs> whatever, or, or 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 freestyle songs from the eighties. You know, he's running wow. up on people singing Silent Morning and PKA. <laughs> huh. you know. That's got to be great, man. Love that. Yeah, yeah, it was it was great. It was great. <laughs> and, and then you know, Necro had the idea to dress him up in a different costume every show. So we had him, you know, during the one tour, he was giving out flyers dressed like a Teletubby, dressed as a fucking toilet seat, um, dressed as Elvis. Then we had him, we were, we did, um, we did, I guess it was, maybe it was where Elvis was born and he was <laughs> dressed in Tennessee. We did Tennessee and he's dressed up like Elvis. So and we we called him Kid Joe, AKA Smelvis. And he, was running <laughs> up on, he was running up on people in, a, in an Elvis costume and that was fucking sick. That's, that's, that's on YouTube. You can find that too. Okay, that's that sounds dope. How are you guys received in the South? I'm just wondering, you know, because they're on some other shit sometimes. Uh, you, you know, the Juggalos. You know, there's a lot of Juggalos and ICP fans and and that that um that genre out yeah, there, yeah. and and a lot of them love us. So we do have following, and sometimes how I quantify shit too. I mean, you can do it on uh, with your numbers on Spotify. Like Spotify for artists will show you where your streams are from and like the majority of your streams and shit. So like, you know, my shit's like New York, Europe, Australia, um, you know, uh, Germany. I have a lot of fans. So, but, but it'll come up. You'll see like shit, Alabama, you know, here and there, you know, oh, but, okay. uh, but not, not, it's not huge, but you know, it, it, we do have fans out there, especially because we have toured. Um, ah. we, have, we have, we have, we have slammed those, those fan bases in those, those areas. Man, you know, we have not seen you in Vegas. I, I don't know. I, I say this to you probably every time. <laughs> we've done it. We've done a few shows in Vegas. Have we you? Did. We did. Yeah, we did the House of Blues in Vegas. We oh, did. Wow. Uh, it, it won't, yeah, the House of Blues in, in one of those big casinos. I forget what casino. Yeah, I know. The, yeah it's in Mandalay Bay. Casino. Yep. Yeah. So we've done. We did the Mandalay Bay House of Blues. Um, that was with ICP. And then we oh, did wow. another solo, solo necro. It was a solo necro tour. Um, and it was a West coast tour and we did like Texas, Cali, and we, we did Vegas. Um, I remember the, the show, I don't remember the venue, but it was across the street and down the block from the heart attack cafe. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know downtown. that spot, right? Yeah. yeah. Downtown so that, there. That was, uh, that I remember that stood out to me, that place, you know? So, um, because I, I remember seeing like a documentary on it, but but th there was uh yeah so we were across the street from there. I don't remember the venue, but I we think did it was a show. The was it the Country Saloon? Because that's I know a lot of people did a lot of shows at this place called Country Saloon over it in that familiar. area. Yeah, it sounds familiar. I, I I know we did that. I think we did Vegas at, at least three times. I want to say at least three. I remember gonna... the one time at Mandalay Bay. I I, I won I won a lot of money at the casino that that time. Oh and wow! Then, uh, yeah, I did good at the casino uh, playing poker. And then, uh, yeah, the the I guess it maybe it was the country saloon, and there was maybe one other time we did Vegas, like like a one off or solo show. Yeah, yeah. Well, the the next time you're in Vegas, man, you're gonna have to either tag me or text me or or do something, man, to let me know. Hey, I mean, I know it's hard to you know keep track of where everybody's from, but yeah. shit, I would love to see you guys live. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. I, now now that I know, I didn't even know you were from you live in Vegas. I didn't really didn't even no, nah, I didn't even know that. This whole time, <laughs> yeah, I didn't know you lived in Vegas, bro. I would have told you that last time because it wasn't that long ago. It was probably, you know, 2017 ish, wow. maybe 19 ish. Yeah, it wasn't That's that crazy. long ago. It was last day. Probably 17. Because as long as we've been rocking together, I mean, I've known you since 2008, I believe. So yeah, did we do it's our a long interview uh, in 08. Yeah, yep, that was the very first okay. first time, man, on the shit that irks me. <laughs> So, right, yeah, because you, it was uh, like my it was like MySpace days, right? Because yep, yeah, yeah, no <laughs> doubt. And I was still with Shell back then, so uh -huh, yeah, it was uh -huh. very different time. But uh, man, oh yeah, no, you definitely have to to. I am in Vegas. I I thought you knew. I don't know why. Uh, maybe I just assume you yeah, looked at my. Just, put, just didn't put two and two together, I guess. Yeah. Oh man. Yes. Definitely. You're in. Well, and the thing is, the bitches too. I can't. I don't always see. You know, you're on Facebook, like on Facebook, you see the same 
three assholes posting all the time. And then the posts you want, like stuff you might post, I rarely see. That's yeah, that's called shadow band. That's that's called Facebook um wanting artists to pay for reach. I know. So you know, and that and that's why I stopped using it. <laughs> you uh, know, I, I don't I'm not really the, the way I'm built as a as a you know as a income machine for for, for music, I right. don't need Facebook. They can go fuck themselves. Like you, you know, my my um my, my my listeners are gonna get notified when I when I put out something and I'm not you know, so it's it's I don't need Facebook to you know to, to get reach on Facebook. You know, it's just it's just I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pay for it. No. So no. um and, and it doesn't even they, they they like they decide how much how much you pay and how much reach they're gonna give you. You know, like like for you know, so you do like a a fifty dollar ad, they'll be like, Okay, we'll let you reach, you know, one thousandth of your fucking following. Right. <laughs> so you don't and, even reach and, all your following, you know. Right. And now Facebook is so wild with the hackers too. I, my two uh, my two main profiles got hacked. As you see, I have a new one, right? With yeah, my yeah. full name or whatever. Right. Somebody reported I think somebody reported one of them saying that it wasn't a real entity, a real name. So I, you know, whatever it was, Christopher Hyde or some shit I had up. And and that wasn't, you know, like it got reported. And then they said, because you're not using your right name, they, they, they locked me out of that one. And then my other one got hacked and my, my fan page got hacked where somebody maybe got the password or whatever. I, it's still linked to my Instagram where anything I post on Instagram will show up on my official fan page, but okay. the, 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 but I can't get into it for my Facebook. So the only way that one of my posts gets on there is if I post on Instagram. And besides that, it's some other fucking asshole who hacked me putting up nonsense. You know, you know. You know I was having that a lot too, where my it would just say that my my comment goes against, you know, the Facebook guideline. And I'm like, I didn't even post anything. What the fuck is this? Well, and it, it was continuous. Like they kept hacking my page, even when I changed yeah, the password. Yeah. So, you know, I think yeah, Facebook my shit got doing it. so hacked. One of, one of my pages got so fucking hacked. The one with like, you, you know, like the, the longest withstanding page I had and uh, uh, the Hyde Beast Man one or whatever. And oh, yeah. and that, that one was so bad. It was, um, they, they were posting like fucking ISIS shit on my page. Oh, wow. And like, yeah, like ISIS flags and ISIS, like like crazy shit. And then like, I, I remember when it was going up, I was getting Facebook notifications that, they took it down, you know, against community guidelines, and then it was like three in a row, yep, and it, yep. it, it it locked me out of my page. It was it. That was it. There was um, and I couldn't get back in, and they wouldn't let me retrieve it. I couldn't even. There was nothing I could do. That's so and, fucking. And, and crazy. that's and that's how I lost my official fan page. So now I use the group page, the you know, Mister Hyde PLR Psychological Records group page. Right. And that's okay. So this is where you find so, everything Hyde. Yeah, that's that's the one. If you're gonna, so to the listeners, if you want to find me on Facebook, that's the best one. It's called it's at Mister it's uh, at Mister Hyde PLR, and and but it's in the groups. See the uh, at, the at Mister Hyde PLR fan page is you might see some stuff that's me, but I don't have control of that anymore. So you know the bitch of all this again, like you were saying in the be beginning of this interview, you got to be on your Instagram, you got to be on your TikToks, you got to have all this. So here it is. This is what you do to to promote your music and shit like this happens. Yeah. Like who wants to deal with that? You get fucked over, right? They, 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 they either make you pay and then you could pay and then get hacked and you know, like you, you're always at the mercy of something. And then you can't you can't even like on Instagram. Uh, it, it's hard for me to put the the, the type of content that I want to put up too because you know. Was, and, and now I also I learned to respond to everybody. So when you engage with your your, your fans. Uh -huh. uh, I used to engage and shoot the shit in the comments or whatever else. Right. And right. they were removing my post because of like content in my comments. So now oh, wow. I just respond to everybody with an emoji because now how could they, how could they fucking say an emoji is against guidelines, yeah. you know? Well, it depends so I on just, what the emoji is. If it's a dick or something, maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I was responding like, you know, yeah, you, you know, whatever. Uh, so I remember one thing that, they, that I put up a reel. And I had put up um, the song Beast Bars and I attached it to the reel because it kind of, uh, there was a line in Beast Bars where I said, uh, you know, the rook that took your queen doggy style behind the dumpster, you know, like um, <laughs> I fucked a uh, cunt stunk, you know, I, I punched a uh, cunt stunk, whatever, some, some stupid shit that I said in the line. But it was some chick like taking a piss in a dumpster and then fell in, right? So <laughs> okay. I, I was like, I have to use that and attach it to the line 
because it just made sense. It was relative, right? Right. So I did, it. and then some some people were laughing at it. They were loving it. They were sending send, sending me shit back. So I was like, uh, I responded back like, "Yes, yeah, filthy cum dumpster" or something like that, right? Right. In in the comments, like laughing with one of my fans, you know, like responding, and they took my whole fucking post down and and and, and told me that. You know, I commented on it in a, in, a, in, a, in a fashion that they don't approve. Whatever. Oh Jesus! Yeah, so I lost all the engagement and everything, and you know, then they they, they gave me a strike against my reels, and ugh, I'm like, Damn. wow, you know what? I'm just gonna respond to everybody with like a a laughing emoji or a thumbs up emoji, and whatever. That's it. Metal horns emoji. And you know, mm-hmm. that, that's the bitch too. It's it's hard for uh, like in my case when I you know I. I, we were just talking earlier off air about MySpace and and all that, and that's how I get a lot of my interviews. But now I'll hit people up on social media and they don't respond back, and I think it's because so much bullshit is in their inbox or the stuff like what you're talking about happens. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> most of my messages on Facebook is spam now. You know, it's like oh, yeah. there's somebody selling their art or content or same shit, same thing on Snap. Snapchat's fucking worst. Snapchat uh. every new person that adds me is like some chick trying to sell me like only fans links or something like that. Yep. Yep. That's what I get too, man. How do they find you? And it says, you know, when they do like the recommended quick ads, fine. Okay, fine. I, I know that's usually somebody who's going to be spam, but then I have people who add me via search or, or, or something. It says added me via search and they're mm. still, it's still spam. So I'm like, these people are seeking for me, seeking me out. Look up Mr. Hyde and then try to sell him OnlyFans links. I, it, it might be if you know, it might just be because you a do box. have a name, you know what I mean? So, or, or they're, 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 they're looking for accounts that have a lot of followers, maybe, or act, you know, I, it could be some kind of bot. But Something. I mean, I, I, I kind of had it with a lot of this shit. Uh, Instagram is where I do most of my business, you know, where as far as like I, I'll get, I have the biggest, I guess following there at this point because the facebook's were hacked i used to have the biggest on you know myspace and facebook and now now it's like instagram took over and i'll do a lot of i have to answer my dms on ig so you know Mm. fans if you do if you have something serious business or a real question or something like that or you know hit me up on on my ig that's at mr hyde plr See, I've d- DM'd some people on Instagram and they've never gotten back, so I don't know what the fuck. Sometimes going it on. goes into like a request folder. Oh, you know, or, or like uh, it'll go like if you've never messaged someone before and right. you message them for, for the first time, it'll go in a message request folder or like a, uh, um, you know, just uh, uh, there's like a general folder and a priority folder and there's a couple of different folders. So it's kind of like kind of the equivalent of getting emails and, and there'll be a spam folder. So it's like oh. that. If you don't, if you don't check that folder, sometimes you'll miss messages. That's what's going so like, on. Okay. W- what I'll do is I'll filter it by unread. So I filter my my inbox via unread, and then all all the unread messages will pop up, and I'll delete the ones that I think are spam off the you know the first couple of lines. Okay. Okay. So yeah. that's what you got to do because I was like, man, how do you? Because it's it's really hard for me to get interviews now. You know, uh, yeah. and you know to do any kind of business. You know, that's what we use yeah. that for. Right. Well, you know, the best way to do sometimes maybe is not inbox and and comment on someone's like most recent post. Yeah. Uh, because if they just posted it, they're looking at the engagement. And if you leave a comment like, "Oh, this is so and so, would love to interview you," uh, this is not spam. You know. <laughs> right. <laughs> you yeah. Know, like something. something like that. Yeah. Huh. And so, like, because uh, I I usually see the comment. Okay. So th- maybe comment on more people's shit stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Right. Well, that's uh yeah because wow I remember you know, back in the days, that's what it was. You know, you look forward to checking your inbox because there was, you know, business related shit in there. You know, now it's like, you know, like you said, chicks trying to sell only fans or the other one that I get somehow they know I do shows. I've booked straight up shows through MySpace. You book a show, the motor hollers at you through MySpace. Yeah. Yeah. That's how it should be. But now it's like, uh, or the other thing I'll get, I don't know how they know this, but they know I do a podcast and I'll get all these, you know, you do a podcast. I can help you get, you know, of course, it's all in broken English, you know, and, and I get you good reach and blah, blah, blah. You probably get the same thing with music, huh? With oh, yeah. It's, it's, uh, yeah, like 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 some Indian bot. Yeah, some <laughs> <laughs> Indian exactly. light bomb. Right, yeah. No, I know. Yeah, this is uh, whoever, so-and-so. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, so, I mean, I I, uh, I get that all the time, and, and it's, it's related to my, my music. So it'll be, uh, oh, yeah, Mr. Hyde, we checked out your page, and 
you know, we love your music and, you know, uh, all right, yeah. Who the fuck are you? You know, you're nobody. Very, you're fucking very vague shit. Like, they're not quoting lyrics or anything. They're just like, we like your music, yeah, yeah, Mr. Yeah. Hyde. You know, we can get it. We can get it on a thousand different playlists. Okay, sure. Like, yeah. I've been there already, man. I'm there. I don't need your help. You know, kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Man. Well, they're you know, I wanna... what's up? They're all scams. Yep. Yep. And that's unfortunate, man, that I've, the scams have ruined a lot of shit for us you know especially yeah, well, doing they're, they're, they're preying off the desperation of the independent artists like the people you know trying to get on and you know um trying to find the get their foot in the door and find a way to get on playlists and find a way to get their music out there they're preying on these people and you know if 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 they get a thousand different people just once they made they made their money <laughs> exactly. There's a, a a story I'll tell you off air that somebody fell, and this guy seems to fall for everything. <laughs> but, right, right. Yeah, man. Actually, um, I want to jump into uh the bad one. Uh huh. Yeah. The bad That's one. The We're gonna pl record. play that one. Yeah. Oh, of course, man. You know, gotta have her scratches and shit. So we'll jump into the bad one, and then we'll come back and talk to you some more. Okay. So, cool. Hang on. Let's tie the strap around your arm and check the healthy dose of death in it Decrepit in a second with yourself and soul not separate Prepping you for the afterlife, the scent of hell is definite To parasite you decompose and flesh that smells like peppermint Get torn apart by wolves cause we thought you was a bird Bring the drama like Nick Vogel versus Corporal Kirshner Lurking in the dark corridor with chloroform for mortals Cause I'm gore and dip like nightcrawl, I teleport through portals Sort of omens magical, your pussy rap is vaginal You man are you a madam, pull the fucking tampon out of you And as the beat is played, slit your wrist and lick your razor blade Wait, but celebrate and have a ticker tape parade Make a problem for your Tylenol We'll fix your hurting heads When I violently assault You'll need a pound of Percocet Curtains wet from blood I spray from home invasion Confrontations with the 12 gauge You crazy should have opened up the safe The safe, 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 safe. The baddest man this planet's ever saw a standing call That's the wall With the hatchet set to wall I'm hacking each and all of y'all And my double jab right will break your beak and shatter teeth Your punch is weak Feels like my grandmother Kissed me on the cheek I'm the creature from the flick that scared the shit out of your kids The insidiously hideous administer of sin The defibrillator isn't gonna save your hopes of end When the rear naked choke is in but we're constriction in I'll bath the hydrochloric acid soaking up your skin I'm bat smash across your legs just to cause a broken shin Examining of the damage done they'll have the doctor stammering Enamored by the patterns that the blood spatters out of things Eradicate your legacy it don't exist like Pegasus I'll twist your neck with emphasis it's crooked like parenthesis I'm every angel's nemesis holds empty set for vengefulness a semblance of Satan's service here on earth in present tense Aggressive like an 80s wrestler A methamphetamines and more menacing Than anything you've ever seen 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 The bed The bed The bed The baddest man this planet's ever saw Standing tall Oh yes, the bad one. Dope ass track. The whole album's dope. <laughs> but, thank you, thank you. Hey, but hey, you were just lacing me on something else. We, you know, we got into the whole scam thing, and uh, I was talking about like the artists. You know, where they say we, we it was something about um, a Spotify playlist or something that you were saying. You know that they. Yeah. Uh, right. Well, yeah, I got I got a bunch of advice. You know, like for that type of shit with the scams and things. Number one thing is if you have a side piece and you're cheating on your wife. You, right name name your side piece in your phone scam likely right so ah. if it rings you can just send it to voicemail be like ah it's fucking scam likely you know what I mean? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well you there said you something about you said something about no. paypal too if you're gonna pay I it know, if you... I'm, a, I'm only kidding yeah so so the the, the my wife's gonna kill me <laughs> so, trying to keep you out of trouble your phone's man. getting blown up from scam likely 
No, so uh, I, I, um, so one of the things you can do to help prevent against, like, if you are gonna pay for any kind of online services or anything like that, whether it's like playlisting, which I don't advise. I feel like they're all scams anyway. Mm -hmm. But if you are gonna pay for something online, uh, try to pay with using PayPal, because PayPal is one of the few payment options is like uh, options that you, you have where you can dispute the charge. If you feel like you didn't get the service that they advertised to you or the service that, you know, that you were, you were promised, you can always dispute the charge with PayPal and they will, the, the, um, whoever scammed you or whoever didn't deliver the service on the other end will get a, a notification on the other end that, that, that their, um, their service is in dispute or their payments in dispute. And you'll, you know, the, you'll get your money back. It'll be, it'll, it'll be called a charge back and you'll get that. You'll get that back if, if they didn't deliver. So, um, nice. and, you know, you'll be able to, you'll be able to at least say your piece. And for the most part, if it is like one of those sketchy fucking services, PayPal will refund your money. Right. So it's, but you have a better chance with PayPal. That's why a lot of these people like using cash app, huh? Oh, the, all, all those fucking scammers and, and, and those motherfuckers. Yeah. What's your cash app? Uh, oh, if you answer this question right, I'll I'll credit your cash app with a million dollars. Oh, yeah. You, know, you ever see that? Uh, yes, feeling, I have. That's I'm what I was going to ask you about. Today. <laughs> I'm feeling generous today. Drop your cash app. It's either a scam to get your fucking cash app info so they can get into your bank, or it's just, you know, just some other kind of scam. So, Damn. yeah, they always cash app and Venmo and those. But ne you'll never see scams through PayPal for the most part, unless it's like a, a, a spam like an email you get that's like a, a hack where they're uh, trying to hack your, your PayPal. A, a phishing password. one, right? Yeah, a phishing one, right? You might get an email from a fake PayPal. You'll get one like PayPal spelled wrong or like the logo looks a little different. Hey, you know? <laughs> 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 PayPal, instead of blue and yellow, it'll be, you know, blue and gold. And, you know, <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> that's, that's it's not the even their logo. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> God damn. There's so many scams out there, man. It's It sucks, you know, especially... Yeah, yeah. Doing what the you PayPal do. logo is the Pornhub logo, and you, you, <laughs> and you get fucked literally. Yes, well, you do get so, fucked. That's true. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, hey, it is what it is. But um, so okay, I got a, a workout question for you now. Since you're a, a workout guy, I, I have something I want to get your opinion on. Um, sure. my brother was telling me I should start using pre workout. The shake weight. The shake weight. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's like it's called the monster. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> the shake weight. I've seen that too, though. Is it? it it's a, a bag or something, right? No, it's it's. I I made a joke because it was a, it's a stupid commercial that they they were selling it on like whatever network. The wow. shake weight is like this new thing, and and it basically it's like you're holding this fucking dumbbell that you shake, and it looks like you're jerking off a dick. <laughs> you know, so, so it's, it's a stupid commercial. Sand in it, I think. Muscle, I've... muscle bound guys shaking this thing and looks like it's a, you know like he's jerking a dick so uh <laughs> i think so, i've seen that. that's why i joked i said oh yeah you, you use the shake weight <laughs> that was a visual <laughs> reference too because I, I've been like oh shit yeah, i never but, heard um, of the monster yeah the monster so my my brother he's going oh man you take this pre-workout stuff before you work out you're gonna feel great so i took this shit man and i swear to god when i got off the head the treadmill i felt like my head was gonna explode i felt really dizzy and disoriented and I'm like, this isn't good. And then somebody told me, don't do those things, especially if you're going to do cardio. What's your input on that? Yeah, all that NO explode. And bro, one time my studio engineer, shout out to Multiple Blast Stuff again. Uh, um, he 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 gave me. I'm already a monster in the booth. I'm already I already get hyped up to drop rhymes and shit like that, right? I become Mr. Hyde in the booth, yeah. and he's giving me on an empty stomach after drinking like a a a a, a cup of Bustello coffee. Um, he gives me NO explode. So now I'm on empty stomach coffee, you know, uh, Bustelo's espresso coffee and NO explode. Oh, God. And I go in the booth and, and back in his old studio, there was no air condition. It was a little booth. And I, now I'm like sweating like a fucking animal <laughs> bouncing off the, the fucking, the studio walls off the soundproofing and, um, just, you know, going crazy. I, I don't know what song it was, but there was probably a lot extra energy on that track. But yeah, uh, that 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 stuff, all that stuff, kind of speeds up your heart rate, and it's artificial. Um, you know, it's all artificial energy. So I don't recommend it. Um, I've never used a, a pre workout besides that that one time. And then my other friend just recently got sick, taking those those five hour energies. He drank oh, coffee and took a five hour energy, and I guess that was also on an empty stomach, and he was throwing up. So oh, it was God. before a football game, and he was throwing up on the field. 
So I don't I don't recommend any of that shit. Um, straight like you know like uh, maybe just eating like an orange or you know get some extra energy from 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 somewhere natural, or right. or just you know coffee like a lot of normal people have their their coffee or black coffee before the gym. That's right. never I never heard anything negative about that. You know have a have a cup of black coffee and go work out and, and then do like fast and cardio. Yeah. Yeah. See, it's not that I need a motivator. It's just that, you know, I, my circulation is not as good. Um, and so he right. was saying that might help my circulation, but man, when I took that one time and worked out, I was like, Oh fuck. No, nah, I'm not doing I, this. Yeah, shit I, don't recommend, I don't recommend that shit. I, you know, in the boxing gym, I, I was boxing for years. I, I used to eat an apple or eat an orange, um, before I sparred and, and that gave me the kind of jolt. Then, then I had this guy who I used to spar with, who used to drink Red Bulls before he sparred. And, and you know, after that, he, he would crash. He wouldn't feel good after. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's uh, I, I would say that artificial shit, anything that has, like, that that artificial caffeine or the ephedra or anything like that or, you know, rip fuel or all that <laughs> stuff speeds your heart rate up and it's no good for your heart. That's what I figured, you know, because he was very he, – he felt very betrayed when I told him that. I said, I, I don't – you know, it's not yeah. good for cardio. And he's like, well, who told you that? You know, and uh, he got kind of because he's a certified trainer and all kinds of other shit. So, you know, but uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, what might work for somebody is not, not going to work for someone else. I, I, I always say if your body's going to let you know, just like if, you you know, like if, if you your car will let you know if, if, if it's not doing well, you know, your right. body's going to let you know if you don't feel well uh, after something, you just don't do it again. Yeah, yeah, and that's what. And then he was saying, "Well, take half the pa the packet and dump it in. Don't do the whole." And I'm like, hey, "Man, look, I don't want to do any of that shit anymore." You know, right. I never use meth. Take a, but... take a half, take a half a bump of coke. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just a little half; it'll make you happy. Only, uh, only one nostril. That's mm. you know, that's what I I kind of equated it to. I've never used meth or coke, but it you know it sound it felt like what it would feel that, like yeah feel know, like that right <laughs> if you're using that shit exactly so. nah nah fuck that not for cardio either i wouldn't man man okay cool I'm, I'm glad to hear it from from a pro obviously like you said you boxed you you do your weight what's your your regiment now is is it a lot of lifting or what's your no no um i uh i do a couple of different things so so w one thing is i use my iphone um and record my steps right so ah, okay, I'll I I do my my cardio at the gym. I'll do like uh, H H I I T like you know hit training. So so it, what I'll do is I'll I'll walk at an incline, a fast incline, uh, for a warm up, right? Like like three minutes, let's say, and then I'll straighten out the um, the incline uh -huh. and sprint, um, for three minutes, and then I'll go back to the incline. And then sprint, and then and then during the incline, I have dumbbells, and I'll use dumbbells while I'm walking at a heavy incline, and then in between, I'll sprint, and then back and forth, back and forth, back and forth for like 25 minutes, and then that's like that usually amasses all the steps on my iPhone. Uh, I'm at like usually I'm around 13,000 or 15,000 steps a day, and when you do when you incorporate that cardio regimen on the treadmill, for me anyway, it 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 it's almost, it almost completes my circle or, or completes my steps on my iPhone. So I make sure I do my steps every day. And then the other thing is I, um, I'm in the gym hitting the bag and I'll, I'll do like a, a heavy, um, a heavy bag workout. And, uh, I was doing like the machines at the gym, Oh yeah. but yeah. I'm not, a, I'm not a big weight guy. I don't, I don't really lift weights. I, I I'm, uh, I'm into like, um, calisthenics and, you know, things like burpees, Push rock climbers. And... Yeah. Push ups, okay. dip, feel like that. Like like moving moving around my own body weight at reps is usually like the best way to because because in any other way you can't do, you, you know you, you can't spread out leg day, arm day, chest day, back day. You're always gonna miss one, you know yeah. here and there. And I think that that's gonna equal your body to be disproportioned eventually, you know because <laughs> right. if, if you do like twelve leg days and you only do six arm days. And then next week you do, you know, 12, you know, whatever, five, you know what I'm saying? Like eventually you're going to miss, miss a day and it's not going to be made up for. So I feel like just move around. If you could do sets of your own body weight, whatever it is, burpees or fucking get ups or, you know, whatever kind of calisthenic you do. So I'll do hmm. like a pyramid workout of like a bunch of different calisthenics and cycle through them. 
Okay. You know, when okay. I need to do a workout without going to the gym. And then besides that, I'll do a boxing workout. I'm, you know, I'm hitting the bag. I'm, I'm doing my cardio and, you know, just my own body weight. How do you like the climber? Uh, it, and that's not the Stairmaster, but it's just a regular. I know. I know thing. it. I've seen, yeah, I've seen it. I, I, I never tried that, but I mean, that <laughs> looks like it's a good workout. It looks like it's going to activate your core and, 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 um, and your arms and legs. And that looks like a good one. Kind of like the, a, the I rowing use machine is good. A I, I machine. use the rowing machine. The, yeah. Like the wrong, yeah, that, that's good. It's good for your back and core. Hmm. Because yeah, yeah, for now I do the fifteen minutes on the climber, and then I do that's thirty great. on the treadmill. Usually, that's my shit. Yeah, I think I think that's great. I think you're doing you're doing fine. Just just don't do it with the uh, no explode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't take any pre workout stuff. I shouldn't yeah. be taking, huh? Yeah, so. that's perfect. And then you know, factor in maybe some some push ups and calisthenics in there, and you're good. Okay, and then, cool. And, and obviously, eat right because. What people don't understand is like 75% of being fit is your diet. Because if you, you know, you could have a fucking muscle car and, and, you know, put piss in the engine. uh, Right. You fuck it all up. Yeah. It's not going to run right. (laughs) Actually, we need to have a car that runs on piss, man, as as expensive as gas has gotten now. Yeah. Road road warrior days, right? (laughs) (laughs) We're, 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 We're killing each other for gasoline. Right. Right. You know, but that would be awesome. Think about that. I mean, it's a natural resource. Piss would be yeah. a, a really remember natural. water. Remember Water World, where they were recycling their own piss. There was like a machine where you <laughs> piss into it. Yeah, you piss into a machine, and it, it filters into drinkable water. Damn! Just imagine so that, that. Yeah, yeah, that's what uh, it was. The only like cool thing in that movie, Water World, with uh, Den- uh, Dennis Hopper and uh, Kevin Costner. Check that out. Drinking your own piss. Wow. Check that out if you want the fucking secret of drinking your own piss. <laughs> and if you're into water Survival. sports, if you're into the yeah. sexual water sports too, man. Shit, piss fetish and stuff, you know? Oh, there you go. There you <laughs> go. That's a scam likely. Scam likely. <laughs> <laughs> that's my piss piss and fist chick, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's my that's my Tuesday night. <laughs> <laughs> man, that's crazy. So, um, shit. Well, oh, how is the... Um, what do you call your daughter? You had a whole name for her, the Bambina something. Oh, a- a- Angelina Bambina. Yeah. Angelina Bambina. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's uh, yeah, and she's basically she is a, a bam bam. She makes a lot of trouble, but she's she's good. She's uh, as energetic as me. You know, she's running around the house. I, I, uh, I reap what I sow. You know, the apples <laughs> and fall far from the tree. Is she able? So, to, I, is she able to talk yet or no? Oh yeah, she's oh, she's, she's gonna be she's gonna be four next week. November nineteenth, oh. she turns four. Damn. So okay. Yeah, she's she's already in uh, pre K. She's going to school. She's um yeah she's she's already she she listens to my music. The, I was just going to ask you that. Does she listen yeah, to your music? <laughs> she does. The song the song nothing but trouble. She loves it because she sings like the 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 background um like the background hemming or humming or you know whatever whatever that background singing is like that. Uh, Oh, that the- mystical <laughs> chanting. Yeah, 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 that shit in the background. She loves to sing that. She's like humming it in the background. And while she's singing it, she's like, Daddy, do your part. Like, like she wants me to rap while oh. she's singing it. Like, yeah. So, so we're doing like the live version of that song. That's funny. And obviously you're not rattled with the fact that she may pick up some of the profanity and some of the other fucked well, up Well, you shit. know, when when, uh, when, the, when the part comes on in that song where I say it's Mr. Hyde, you fucking whore, right? Like, right. That's part of the hook. That's one of my classic lines from Killer Collage or, or whatever, Married to Pain, right? So that's like, why I said that when I, we first started. Yeah. Right, right. So, like, that, that I had to entwine it into a hook. It, it was I thought it was funny. So, like, to, to circle back to it and bring it all back together, right? Right. 360. So, when that part of the song comes on, so we're, we're jamming. Picture it like this, right? I'm rapping, and she's, she's doing the humming and singing in the background. And and when that part approaches, I stop rapping and I say, "You like this song, don't you?" Ah, so you, <laughs> you know, cover it up like that. I'll <laughs> drown it out. I'll drown out the Mister Hyde, you fucking whore part with, "Oh, you're doing a good job, Angelina. You're singing good." You know, like that's like she doesn't hear that part. <laughs> so what about parts that, like in during the the actual verses, where you say, you know, something motherfucker, or you know, yeah, uh, no, kind of the cunt. same thing. Yeah, yeah, kind of the same thing. You know, like ah. I'll I'll I'll. Uh, I'll say something over it. That's not that. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Well, that's yeah, pretty yeah. creative, actually. Yeah, it's kind of like when, you know, my mother was watching a movie with me and there might have been a sex scene and she'll fast forward through it. It's kind of like that. <laughs> Damn. That's... Um... I remember going to the movie theater with my mother and watching um, um, 
when Harry met Sally in the movie theater, and then there was the, that orgasm scene. Oh yeah, yeah, so she, yeah, and I, and it was one of the most uncomfortable things ever was to sit in the movie theater during that scene with your mom. <laughs> yeah, I would think yeah. so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's okay. I mean, I, I took my mom. Well, this is recently. Well, not too recently. A couple of years ago, I took her to see Batter Santa. <laughs> oh, okay. That's so, that's great. Bad Santa and Bad Santa is great. Billy Bob Thornton's best role. <laughs> oh, he's awesome. He's awesome at that. But I remember I uh, I had to piss at one point, and I'm like, Mom, can you take me out to the bathroom so I can piss? So then I come, we come back. I come out of the bathroom, and I'm like, All right, let's go back in the theater. She's like, Do you really want to go back in there? I'm like, oh, Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. It was uh pretty tough. Everybody fucked with me about that. You took your mom to that shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, fuck that. Or bad, bad grandpa and he little flicks. Oh yeah, yeah. That's the yeah. other one where he shits on the wall in the restaurant. Yeah, oh. <laughs> <laughs> those are good though. They're good five. I like I like shock value flicks like that. They're funny. Love them. Oh, they're awesome. So, damn man. Well, you know what? We're probably gonna end it off here, but uh, I want you to give your uh, anything you want people to know as far as any social medias or anything. Uh, go ahead and spit that yeah. out. Yeah, my handle pretty much everywhere. I kind of like consolidated my handle. It's it's Mr. Hyde PLR on Instagram, Facebook. Remember, it's the group page, the Mr. Hyde PLR group page. Um, Twitter is at Mr. Hyde PLR. Uh, fucking all, basically all of them, all, all the all the social media handles. Um, if you're looking for me on Spotify, it's obviously just Mr. Hyde, Mr. Dot Space H Y D E. Thankfully, there there are like. 15 or 20 Mr. Hyde circulating out there. But, right, you were um, saying that thanks, last time, too. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, thankfully I'm the biggest. Nobody does research anymore, you know what I mean? I'm going to come out tomorrow and name myself Jay-Z, you know, but without the hyphen. <laughs> I'm Jay-Z without the hyphen, you know. <laughs> Just so, Jay-Z. But, yeah, that's what people do. I've seen Mr. Hyde without the dot. I've seen Mr. Hyde dot with no space. I've seen Mr. Hyde spelled out M-I-S-T-E-R, you know, like, Wow. These are all these fucking losers that don't do their research, you know. And then, and then there's the fucking worst. There's this Mister Hyde in Italy, Italian. It's Italian romantic pop singing fag shit from <laughs> Italy. Mr. Hyde? Why, why would you name yourself Mister Hyde and 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 rap, you know, pussy fucking love shit? You know, what I mean? <laughs> well, he probably doesn't even know who Mr. Hyde is, you know, like we all know Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde as Americans, but he probably yeah, has never, but, but you're, you know, well, name, name yourself something Italian. Why are you naming yourself something American, Mr. Hyde? You know what I mean? Like that, that's true. That's another thing. Like your audience, his audience is 99.9% from, from Italy, you <laughs> know, true. so like that's where his full fan base is from. So you're going to use an American term, you know, that's like fucking, yeah, that's like, that's like me naming myself Buongiorno, you know, like fucking, <laughs> <laughs> or, yeah yeah you're, that's like you're italian and you name yourself the olive garden go fuck yourself <laughs> fuck, yeah, that's some pretty you're american well i've yeah, seen so. a. Uh, I think i said this last time too i've seen a, a tone loke and i thought it was oh, the nice. tone loke it's a it was a southern dude man like a young nice. well i'm glad i'm glad tone loke is getting fucked over too as well as, <laughs> as <me>. oh <laughs> there's a lot of that I'm sure. Yeah. No, I, 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 there's a, I think there's a, a new death metal band in Necro. I mean, it, there's these scumbags that, that that don't do any research and don't pay any homage, and 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 they they're they're doing that. So, um, but yeah, but uh, thankfully I'm the biggest one. So like, if you search me, I should come up first. Um, Good. And, uh, yeah, my YouTube channel is also <clears throat> Mr. Hyde PLR. Uh, you'll find it easy. Or just look up Mr. Hyde channel. And, cool. Uh, and that's about it. And, and check out. Oh, and my website is is mrhydeplr dot com. So if oh. you want signed copies of the new album or any album, or signed merchandise or merchandise in general, hit up mrhydeplr dot com. Um, it, you could you could message the website if you want a special request as far as you want something signed to your name or, you know, if you want to be called a scumbag or fuck face in, in the signature. <laughs> I've had that too. I had a female fan message me to um to sign everything to cunt. So oh. I signed every I signed everything to cunt. And um nice. I think I might have added stinky cunt in there too. So just oh, she probably my own, that. That's probably yeah, cool. my own enjoyment, you know, like I have to embellish on it a little bit more. You know, you have to if you miss the hide and you know a vocabulary Keep person it. like me. 
Yeah, yeah, you got to add some adjectives in there, you know. Absolutely, because you just say cunt, you know, after a while, it's like, okay, what, dirty cunt, smelly cunt? Yeah, yeah, you there know? has to be an adjective that, that, that you know, precedes cunt. You can't just say cunt. Right. If you're going to go there, you might as well get, get, uh, get colorful. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Speaking of colorful, okay, so the last song we're going to take them out with is Hell's Radar. Do you have anything to say about the, this track? Uh, radar, radar of Hell. Radar yeah, of Hell, so, sorry. So, uh. Yeah, well, sh- shout out to the DJ. You mentioned him all the DJ cuts, and we didn't even say his name. The dude that did all the cuts on this album, his name is DJ Gruesome. <clears throat> dope, ba- dope battle DJ from Canada, oh. Ontario, Canada. He's he's ill. He's been a fan for a long time, and, and um, I've done drops, and he put songs on on his mixtapes, you know, featuring me and shit. So we've had a a cool, you know, back and forth relationship for years, and and he did all the cuts on this record, and um, yeah, so. Um, that's another thing that there's that, that some of the cuts that he did on Radar of Hell are um, the the first scratches you'll hear are actually scratches from The Exorcist, like when when she's possessed and shit. Oh, so yeah. some of those cuts are like uh, the the movie The Exorcist and shit like that. And then and then obviously I have um, there's like a public service announcement preacher talking like you are on the Radar of Hell and, and you know so we <laughs> we kind of I I found that. And, uh, you know, just from digging and finding shit. And then I had him cut it up, which was fucking great. It was kind of like a, like a genius thing to do. So, um, you guys will enjoy that when you hear that. And then, uh, the beat was done by this producer from Italy, Sardinia, Italy called, uh, uh, Osir. And he's, um, he's done a, a bunch of tracks. He's done stuff on the Boogeyman is Real. He did Mr. Fucking Hyde. He did, uh, Verses from an Unquiet Grave. Uh, previous songs and he 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 produced war beast ah. radar of hell so so oddly enough you, the couple of tracks that you played um they, they were both by him and nice. then the bad one the bad one was produced by cotards he did the the all the production on we are the nightbreed okay uh, which was my, my last project but yeah radar of hell is pretty sick definitely um evil evil feel to it so i must like his production that's probably what it is i'm just like this dude's dope <laughs> obviously yeah 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 his beats, he did a great job on this album he did he you know it's funny so o- o- ozir did war beast radar of hell and make a mess he did all three of oh so beats. okay so three of his so tracks i picked three, three out of the four that you played were from him yeah. nice man yep. <laughs> he's, he's from italy and doesn't support the other italian mr hyde he, 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 good okay let's he, make he sure he's not jamming some Pavarotti ass shit or something, you know. Yeah, yeah. He supports the American uh <laughs> the, the Italian American Mr. Hyde. <laughs> right, right. Can't say the Italian because obviously you're Italian too. So, you know. Right, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, damn. Well, Mr. Hyde Main, thank you for coming on, hanging out like we always do. You know, it's yeah, always, of course, a always a pleasure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, you know, two buddies kicking it and picking each other's brains and you know, talking good shit. shit. Yep. Yeah, exactly. always, always talk. You always, always got to talk shit. Throw some insults oh. out, bug out, fuck around. You know. Absolutely. Definitely. Absolutely. It's what Definitely. we do, man. And we got and we got some good nuggets. You got some advice to fans. You got some advice to aspiring artists. Some some, some spam advice. and scam advice. Workout advice. Yeah. This is productive. Yeah. Of course productive, it is, man. man. It's always productive now, when we do some shit. I, I love that. I hate when I'm I'm interviewing somebody and they give me two word answers. I'm like, oh, this shit is like an ice pick through the head of your cock, man. This is not cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was, well, that was colorful. You like that, man? That's that's yeah, you guys like that inspire one. shit like that. Gonna, you gonna, have to quote, gonna have to quote that. I'll cite that on my next album. Oh, oh please do. Please do. <laughs> <laughs> you got well, it. Well, anyway, bitches, I may hang on with this one till we end here. But uh, I'm Maxwell Silverhammer. This has been the Nothing Sacred interview with Mr. Hyde. And that's the story there, bitches. Turn on your hell's radar. <laughs> Prepare to be blown away like smoldering ashes in the flames Or in a hurricane, I'm drunk and get the fuck up out my way I'm the juggernaut in rage, don't you like the Hunger Games? All y'all suckers on my sofa suffering inside a cage Pick your fate, evisceration, if you hate and split your face up with the razor blade And drip some very tasty lemonade and iron made in metal banging Spit in seven Satan languages My gang is mangling, you hang you from a hook dangling Achilles ankle shit, I'll shank you, brick or bank on it I'm wilder than orangutans, I drag a tank, I sank a lit I'm a fire breathing heat and cleave you up without a reason Cut you like a spree Season of the NFL, believe it. Reason is get left leaking when I meet him, greet him with a fist. Leave the preconditioned by the seasons in abyss. I be the blood red, dead skin mask wearing phantom of the opera. Chop your top off like the helicopter. Gotcha. You are on the radar of hell.
Your name is known in hell. You are the object of Satan's hatred. The devil and his demons know about you. Satan's hatred, the devil. 